This is a documentary that showcases the evolution of medicine throughout many American wars. All of these wars have been times of great advancement in research in the field of medicine. This is Jonathan Letterman. He is the man responsible for many of the medical advancements that you will now see today. Such as the triage system, in which is a system that we use to divide the men up based on the extremity of their wounds. We would actually put little tags on their toes that would indicate what type of wounds they had that would place them in different categories. This is an 1800s amputation kit, and next you will see a modern day amputation kit. As you can see, we have come a long way with sanitation. An example that you would know would be that they use one knife to cut hundreds of men's limbs off, which isn't best practice, especially with all the germs and bacteria that would be on that knife that would come from other men. Next, you will see a chloroform mask, which is what they use to knock people out in practices like biting on things or drinking alcohol to stop the bleeding. You will be seeing a video that will kind of explain what, how they use ambulances. Can you tell us about it and what makes it different than a normal wagon? Certainly. This is called a wheeling ambulance or a Rosecrans ambulance. Called a wheeling ambulance because they were mostly made in Wheeling, West Virginia, then at the time Virginia during the war. Um, and it's, it, this is really the top of the line ambulance that's available then. It's a four wheel ambulance instead of the early war two wheel ambulances that you often see. Um, so it's much sturdier, it's much more comfortable for the patients inside. One of the things that really distinguishes this as an ambulance uh, rather than some sort of other wagon is it's got a much more elaborate spring system underneath of here. You can see that its uh, springs are pretty heavy and those are designed to cushion the ride of wounded soldiers who are already in a lot of pain and they don't need to be jarred around further on um, uh, the rough roads of the time, uh, macadam roads, plank roads. And now I'm going to talk to you about World War One or the Great War which began in of many inventions and discoveries that would begin to change medicine and we have seen its impact ever since. One of the most influential advances made in medicine during World War I was the discovery and use of blood transfusions. In 1914, when the war started, the skill of performing a blood transfusion was unheard of. By 1918, blood transfusions were saving the lives of thousands of soldiers. The blood was to be stored in an ice box ready for the arrival of patients. Some blood transfusions were even performed using blood that was up to 26 days old. Blood transfusions are still widely used today. World War I was also the birthplace of an idea that would later form in the mass units. Two surgeons by the name of George Krill and Dr. Harvey Cushing were in Europe in 1915 before America had entered the war. They treated wounded children from the war at the Ambulance American Hospital while developing a very revolutionary idea. Transform American medical schools and leave civilization hospitals into wartime hospitals. This would become the basis of mass units and all they were entitled. These two surgeons would later be depicted in a hit TV comedy show known as MASH. Towards the end of the war, there was a miraculous event that would be the cause of the death of roughly 50 million people. The influenza pandemic of 1918. More people died of influenza in a single year than in four years of the black bubonic plague from 1347 to 1351. And now we will move on to World War II, which began in 1939 and ended in 1945. We will talk about some of the medicines used during this time, like, for example, solanolamide, which was discovered by Gerard Jones Paul Domek. It kills deadly bacteria and is used effectively in destroying Streptococcus bacteria. Penicillin was also discovered by Howard Flurry, Ernest Chain, and Alexander Fleming. It was actually an accidental discovery when Alex Fleming noticed mold growing in a petri dish that had been injected with staph bacteria. The bacteria was killed off by penicillin mold which is three years from mass protection of penicillin should begin. More 
morphine was widely used in World War II. It was an addicting painkiller that started to be extensively used as a form of narcotherapy. Morphine is processed in the opium poppy seed plant that grows in Turkey and In time, Dr. Charles Drew became the first African-American man to earn a degree of Doctor of Science in Medicine. Charles Drew developed groundbreaking techniques for storing and transfusing blood. And in 1941, he was appointed first director of the American Red Cross Blood Bank. However, when the Red Cross refused blood donations from blacks, Drew resigned in protest. Most men would enter into brothels to escape the war, which was so devastating to them. And because of this, the end result would not be so pleasant. Men would also have injuries like bombing to the face, burns, and maybe even a little frostbite. So they would have to wear protective gear to shield themselves from these things in order to not have a lasting effect. Last but not least, we will talk about the men and women who sacrificed their days and their time to help keep these men off of the battlefield. Nurses and doctors would work sun up and sun down to keep these men alive and well and to keep them healthy off of the battlefield. Drugs were a big problem during the Vietnam War and during this period of time because of the high stress levels from the war. They would often come back even addicts or worse and they often wouldn't make it. It was just a way that they would cope with everything that was happening during that time so everybody would turn to drugs.